Hey YouTubers, I'm Jacob, and this is an in-depth walkthrough of my custom 12 volt dual battery system installed in my 2015 F-150. I've been using this system for two years now while living on the road full time, and it has been kick ass. Each of these products I've selected are high quality products for long-term safe use. And I've included the product links for each of these in the description below. So make sure to click on those and check them out. And before we get started, I'm posting weekly videos for you guys. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content. All right, let's get right into it. We're gonna talk through this power flow wise. The brains of the system is a Red Arc BCDC 1225D. It is a great charge controller. Now when the truck is on, it is charging from the start battery, but there is a fuse tap that lets us know when the key is in the ignition and will only charge from the start battery when the truck is running. So your first wire you're gonna run is from your positive off of your start battery. And that will go to your controller and also have a large fuse in between. Let's go back there and show you the controller. Now, one thing during my planning process is I knew I wanted to run power to both ends of the truck. So I wanted to centralize the controller. That way I'm minimizing my runs for my branch lines and having a more efficient power flow and less power loss. So what I ended up doing is I located my Red Arc BCDC 1225D behind this seat. There's some lost space in these F-150s. Believe it or not, they do not include a release to get back behind here. So I'm using a Built Right Industries pull tab that can be installed on the seat so you can capture that space back behind your truck. Behind the seat here, we have our Red Arc BCDC 1225D. Uh, we also have two of the inline fuses that they recommend. Uh, one is between the start battery to the controller and then between the controller to the auxiliary battery which is in the bed of the truck but believe it or not there wasn't enough room to put a secondary battery under the hood of this truck with the 5.0 liter v8 it's just really crammed in there so i ended up putting it in the bed of the truck and mounted it in a marine grade case and that way it's just right on the other side of this wall because you want your controller mounted really close to your secondary battery it's charging so that's really important I also didn't want to mount it in the engine bay because I knew I wanted to eventually use a lithium battery, which is not good in heat. So they're recommended not to be in engine bays. So it's best that it's mounted in the bed of the truck. I do have this mounted to a piece of pine wood. Uh, that way everything's kind of clean and mounted up. And then I just put carpet on top and drilled holes through. I did this to be able to pull it out and make the install process easier that way too. Uh, when I'm heat shrinking wires, I'm not doing it back behind here where I could possibly catch fire on anything. I wish there was a way that I could secure the panel. I don't really like the idea of drilling into the back wall of the cab and making any extra holes in there that I don't need. So what I've done is I put heavy duty Velcro on the back of this and it allows it to stick to this carpeted insulation on the back wall. It's not the greatest. Sometimes I'll find this is kind of turned over back here, but I haven't really found a long-term solution for that. So far though, it's been totally fine, loosely fit as it is. It's not gonna go anywhere with all these wires, obviously, but it is just really convenient that if I ever wanna add on to it, I could just pull this out. I can run my wiring through the backside, give myself a couple extra you know, feet so that I can safely uh, shrink wrap my wire before I connect it up. Another reason I chose to mount the Red Arc system here is because there are two active vents for pressurization on the back of the cab, one on each side. There's one on this side and there's just simply some flaps that uh, you need to open up and run your cabling through. I didn't want to add any new holes in the cab. I wanted to use the existing holes. The only problem I had with that is because the cabling is going through there, it's open. So you can get dust and debris coming in through that hole. So what I ended up doing is when I soundproof the cab, I used the same kill mat soundproofing and covered that vent completely so that no dust can get through. So I do have the existing vent on that side for pressurization and it's been running just fine for two years now. Real quick, my wife thinks soundproofing is not worth it. We were only able to drop two decibels by soundproofing the back cab, the doors and the roof as well as the A and B pillars, but I don't totally agree with that. I think it helps a little bit with some road noise, but that's another topic to get into. Now here I have my Blue Sea Systems 12 fuse fuse block. It's got 12 slots, so you can add you know different rated fuses and uh, cabling on there, depending on your needs. It's super easy to remove this cover, just to keep it safe, and you can pull your fuses and check them really easy. 
I just wanted a lot of extra options because once you install this, you can just continue to add to it over time. So it's something I knew that I wanted just a lot of extra options just in case. Probably overkill, you could probably use like, I don't know, a six fuse. But as you can see, I've got you know, several of them filled up here, one, two, three, four, five of them. And I plan to add at least two or three more different lighting systems to this. So I would have already exceeded the six fuse system. A little overkill, but just something I was trying to plan ahead on while doing this. Right here is where our Uniwix Defender X100 lithium iron phosphate battery is mounted. It has to be upright. Previously, I had two AGM batteries and they were able to be mounted on their sides so I could put them underneath this cover here, and gain a little bit of space back. That was convenient, but the capacity for those two batteries really wasn't enough. And this one lithium iron phosphate battery has been plenty to run both of our refrigerators full time. I have an in-depth video on how to install a lithium iron phosphate correctly with the Red Arc system. Make sure to check it out. I've included the link for it in the description below. Now, after I run my power from the Uniwix battery back to the Blue Sea Systems distribution panel, everything branches out from there. So I have separate fuses, one fuse just running back to the back of the bed of the truck to the switch panel that I've created. I love this switch panel. We have two USB ports, so I'm able to charge electronics back here when we're parked or just hanging out places. Also, I installed two 12 volt plugs that way i can have the fridge running 24 7 and then i've got another slot so we can put in our 500 watt power inverter that is portable that way if we want to work off the bed of the truck we're able to open up the awning and just set our laptops up right here on the tailgate and plug right in so it's super convenient i have an in-depth video on how to make your own switch panel and i've included the link for it in the description below so make sure to check it out so the great thing about these F-150s is Ford has made it really easy to run new wiring. There's existing cable troughs right here along the footwells. All you gotta do is pull up these simple pieces and then you can run wiring the whole length of the cab. I was running all my interior wiring this way and I've done so by adding two 12 volt plugs underneath the passenger seat here. And I did this so that I have a plug in the central part of the cab to be able to plug a cab fridge in which we have our Bougie RV CR Pro 30 mounted in the cab. We're gonna do a follow-up review video on that product, so make sure to check that out here soon. These two plugs allow us to also plug in our 500 watt portable power inverter, and we can run it on the cab here without turning the truck on because it's pulling from the secondary battery. And it's been really helpful. We've used this several times now, working out of the cab of the truck, where we can plug in two laptops to our 500 watt inverter, and we're pulling from our secondary battery and not discharging our start battery, and we don't have to start the truck. It's super handy. With this 500 watt pure sine wave power inverter, you don't really get the true capacity of 500 watts using the DC plug. It actually says it right here. Please make sure load under 150 watts, uh, but it is good enough to charge our laptops and super handy that it's portable. That way we can move it between the cab or the rear of the truck when we need it. Now I did have to use a fuse tap for the Red Arc unit to let it know when the truck is running. And what I did is I select a fuse slot that I knew that I didn't have, like the cooled seats for this truck. And I simply tap that fuse so that it knows when the ignition's on and off. That way it can switch between solar charging or charging off the alternator. The fuse panel that I tapped into is down here on the interior footwell. The Red Arc BCDC 1225D can also charge off of solar power when the vehicle is not running. Super handy, we've got a 100 watt bougie RV solar panel up there to charge us when the truck is not on. So this keeps our batteries topped off, our fridge is running, everything is happy when we have the solar panel on here. Now if we didn't have the solar panel, there would be some pretty big draws on this. And if you're not driving constantly, you would need to monitor your battery levels. With this solar panel up here, I don't even have to worry about it. The truck can go at least four days without any sunlight. So as long as we've got some sunlight and it's parked outside, it's plenty of power to keep everything running. I've mounted it on 8020 aluminum extrusion and just made my own rack that spans between the track rack system here. I also doubled it to hold our recovery boards underneath and just protect it uh, from anything coming up and hitting the underside of the panel since it's exposed here. In the future, I'd maybe like to mount it above the cab. That way it's just less exposed, uh, but that's neither here nor there. I did want to be able to monitor our battery life while driving. So I added a voltage meter here in the cab. 
I would recommend adding an on off switch to be able to turn it off or dim it down. It's super bright, so I have to cover it with some electrical tape. Uh, I would just plan ahead enough to know how bright it is because some of these are a lot brighter than you think and can be very blinding at, when driving at night. Up here, I've installed the custom FX switch panels. This is a custom switch panel. They'll put any design you want on them. I wanted the FX4 off-road since this truck is the FX4 model and looks really slick. I've installed all of my off-road lighting to go off of my auxiliary battery and for good reason. If I'm doing a night recovery and I'm using the winch, the winch is running off of the start battery and draws a lot of power. Now you do want to have the truck on when you're winching, but I didn't want any additional stress with off-road lighting on at the same time. Also, if I wanted the lighting to be on and the truck off, this way I'm just pulling from my secondary battery and I'm not going to kill my start battery. So everything up here is running off of our Uniwix Defender X100. I do have an in-depth install video for this custom FX switch panel. And I've included the link for the video in the description below, so make sure to check it out. Up front here, I'm running the Lightfox 20 inch single row light bar from Vic Off Road. Really reliable, bright light bar and very affordable. I absolutely love it. Great for forward lighting. I'm hoping to install some more for different directions around the cab. That way I can have those other switches filled up. This is all running off of that auxiliary battery. And again, I mentioned I like this because I don't want any additional power draw if I'm having to run the winch because the winch takes a lot of power from the start battery. Here's one of my fuse relays for my off-road lighting for the switch panel. All right, so next let's talk about wiring. All the wiring I used on this project is marine grade wire. I did that because it's safer, it's got a thicker insulation, and it's self-extinguishing if there's any flames that arise. Everything I took into mind on this build is safety in mind because you don't want to start adding anything that could be dangerous for your vehicle and that could self-combust. So I've invested in quality products for this build and I recommend you do so as well. Marine grade tinted copper wiring is the best wiring you could buy for your money and I highly suggest using it. Now for wire sizes, my main battery runs from the start to the secondary and then the secondary to the controller and all that. I used four gauge marine grade wire. I upped it a little bit because I knew I wanted to have additional stuff added to it over time. I would recommend you use that. I almost use a, a full 25 feet between the controller and the start battery just because of the way that I had to route it along the frame of the vehicle and up and around. So you wanna make sure you have plenty of length when you're doing this. Any of the branch lines after that from the Blue Sea Systems, I ran in 10 gauge wire. Uh, and that is because I knew I'm gonna have big power draws towards the bed of the truck, like the fridge, any other electronics charging off of it as well. For anything like small, like the voltage meter or just stuff that's gonna have little power draw, I've used 18 gauge wire for that, much smaller gauge. Also for the fuse tap as well, I use 18 gauge, but everything is marine grade wire that I've ran here. And it's good to have you know, your reds and your blacks and to stick to the colors that you should. I did have to add another ground on the truck for this. I wanted everything to be totally separate of the existing system. So I didn't add on to an existing ground. What I did is I screwed through the flange mount for the body mount from the body to the frame just below the cab here. I bolted it through so I could, you know, bolt them on really good. And then I covered it with a uh, battery terminal protective to protect them. Yeah. All right, so if there's anything I would change, it would be the routing from the start battery. As you can see, I'm going over the engine bay and this insulation is just cracking and falling apart. And the wiring has obviously gotten really hot and has been sagging down. So this is one thing I would change is I'm probably gonna update the routing and go in front of the engine, um, maybe under rather than over, because obviously it's getting pretty hot right there. So that's one thing I would change. Now you may be wondering if a custom 12 volt setup is for you, and it all depends. If you're only wanting to run a portable refrigerator on the weekends or for short trips or occasionally, a portable power bank may make the most sense for you. If you're running a job site and you've got a lot of heavy power tools, then either a generator or the F-150 power pack or power generator pack may make the most sense for you. If you have light to moderate 12 volt needs like charging laptops, cameras, you know, portable refrigerators, or you wanna run off-road lighting, then a custom dual battery 12 volt setup may be the best for you. The great thing is once you've invested and installed the components, you can add to it over time and customize it to fit your needs 
It is very adaptable and can be totally customized to what you want. Now, if you're gonna run anything with a lot of heavy power draw, this way you're not killing your start battery, leaving you stranded in the middle of nowhere with no cell service or way to recharge any of your electronics. Also, the fact that you have two batteries is kind of a fail safe. You can actually jumpstart yourself if you do kill your start battery and you've still got the auxiliary battery. And even with the 100 watt solar panel, you could swap batteries if you needed to, to get out of a remote location and charge with the solar only. This is a fairly complex project, so if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help out and answer your questions. I hope this video was helpful. I've included the product links and video links in the description below, so make sure to click on those and check them out. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please smash down the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thanks for watching.